Okay, so I just want to review some of the uh, key properties that we're going to need in order to calculate test statistics and p-values when we're doing a test for a difference of two means. Um, and so we looked at this back in chapter four, but I just want to kind of review what the central limit tells us in theory about a sampling distribution for a difference in two means. So here we're going to assume that we are picking a random sample of N1 items from population one, which is normal, and we know the mean and standard uh, or variance of that. And um, over here, we're picking a sample size N2 from a second normal distribution. And um, what we can show is if we want to look at the distribution of all differences in means from these two independent populations, um, then the expected value of this difference should be the difference that we expect from the population means and the variance of this distribution. We can use the property that we can split up this difference. And when we do so, we square the negative one in front of the Y bar. So we sum the two variances together. And um, we've talked about how we can get the variance for each of these means separately. Um, so I see that I have a typo here, sorry. That should be a plus symbol right here. So we sum the two means, um, and so that means down here, um, this would be, in theory, the distribution for the difference in sample means. Um, it's normal, it's gonna be centered at the difference in the population means, and we can find the standard error of the distribution by taking the square root of the variance of the difference in the means. Okay, so that's a, a quick little review on that. If you wanna go back and review some of that, that was back in chapter four. Um, so now let's see how we can apply this theory to calculate a test statistic for a test on the difference of two means. Okay, so now that we've reviewed what the sampling distribution for a difference in two means looks like in theory, Let's see how we can apply that um, for a hypothesis test on a difference of two means. So our hypotheses are gonna generally be the same, um, and that is the null hypothesis is gonna always claim that there's no difference between the two populations um, in regards to whatever the parameters you're, you're testing. So for mean, it's always gonna be there's no difference in the two population means. And the alternative is going to be that there's some sort of difference. Either um, we're going to not indicate a direction and just say that these two means are different, or we might be wanting to test to see whether one is less than or maybe one is greater than the other one. Um, so the setting up the hypotheses still going to go the same way. Um, then we're going to collect our sample, gather some statistics from the sample, and use them to calculate what's called our test statistic. Um, and so recall that the test statistic measures how many standard errors is the observed statistic from the claim in the null hypothesis. So um, in, what that would look like is from my sample, I calculate the mean from population one, X bar one, and the mean from population two. So this is my observed difference. And then I would wanna compare this to how big um, is the difference that's claimed in the null hypothesis. And in this case, what's nice is we've claimed that this difference is zero. So over here, that's our claim. So this is gonna be equal to zero. And then next, we would wanna divide that by the standard error because we would wanna know how big is the difference in our sample compared to the null relative to how much variability we expect in sampling altogether. And that's what the standard error is measuring. So um, then we divide this difference by the standard error. So I would take on the top X bar one minus X bar two minus zero. So I've just um, left off this subtraction of zero over here. Um, so really what's going on top is saying how big is the difference that we observed compared to zero? And then on the bottom, we would divide this by the standard error. And for the standard error, um, I don't know why I missed all of these signs over here, that should be a plus sign. So now um, we're gonna 
take the difference and divide it by the square root of the standard deviation of, of sample 1 squared over the size of sample 1 plus the standard deviation of sample 2 squared divided by the size of sample 2. So we're just going to scale that difference relative to the differences that we um, should expect from sampling just due to the randomness of the sampling process. And then we're going to calculate the p-value, and because we have used the standard deviations from the samples rather than the population standard deviations, which we don't know, again, this means that the underlying distribution is better approximated by a t-distribution as opposed to a normal distribution. So we would call this a t-test statistic, and to calculate the corresponding p-value, we would use this test um, this standardized difference um, and we would calculate the area underneath a T distribution whose degrees of freedom um, more accurately are found using what's called Welch's approximation which is a pretty um, kind of gnarly looking formula um, and if we're doing calculations by hand then more simply we can just err on the side of caution and say we're going to pick the degrees of freedom which is equal to the smaller of our sample sizes minus one over here. Um, so that's kind of the, the setup for how we can calculate test statistics and then calculate p-values using the theory, um, basically the central limit theorem, uh, to dictate what the underlying sampling distribution should look like. So let's take a look at an example on the next slide.